Hello and the warmest welcome to Standard Bank's second Phenomenal Families series. I'm your host, Lerat Mbele. Now, following the success of our series last year, we're delighted that you could join us again for weekly insights into the key issues and trends impacting family offices and family enterprises. We've created a library of thought leadership content together with industry experts to help you preserve and grow your family's wealth. Drawing on their decades of experience, these experts will share their insights and also personal stories around topics such as impact investing, global real estate changes, technology, and trends in an ever-changing world, even much more. We hope that you will find these sessions to be both interesting and informative, and we look forward to hosting you. For now, though, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the Head of Family Office and Family Enterprise at Standard Bank. Her name is Lisa Forster, who will officially launch our second edition of Phenomenal Families. Lisa, it's great to see you, and thank you so much for creating this platform once again. So tell me about the Phenomenal Families virtual series, how it's come about, and what you're hoping for it. Thanks very much, Lorato. So before COVID, the most value that our families derived was from our in-person events, where we would bring together like-minded captains of industries, business leaders, to engage in peer-to-peer conversations, as well as to share practical insights on similar challenges that they also might be facing. And in fact, we also had a couple of clients that landed up concluding business transactions together as a result of connecting at some of our events. But... As we all know, unfortunately, in-person and face-to-face contact are still not a reality for most of us. And so in October last year, we launched our inaugural Phenomenal Families virtual series, where we brought together some of the best global subject matter experts with decades of experience in all aspects relating to family office and family enterprise to deliver a rich thought leadership content series. In fact, the virtual landscape allowed us to extend our reach way beyond just South Africa, but it reached across the African continent as well as globally. So we were really, really excited about that. Um, We see the acceleration of this digital and uh, virtual revolution as an exciting opportunity and one that will certainly bring the Standard Bank Group closer to our vision of becoming a platform organisation. So following on from the success, as you alluded to, of last year's series, we've been working hard to craft the content for our season two, and we're incredibly excited to, in fact, be launching that here today. The series will start uh, with issues that are relevant at the moment to our next generation of clients, covering important topics such as what they need to do to play an integral role in future-proofing their family wealth and legacy. Other topics will include how to tackle tricky family dynamics and conflict management that sometimes arises when considering succession planning, and of course also to optimise the integration of the rising generation into the family business, to name but a few. Over the next five weeks, our audience can really look forward to real stories practical insights based on the most up-to-date global trends that are impacting family office and family enterprise clients. And so we definitely don't suggest that you miss this series. Obviously, many organizations and no less, the Standard Bank Group is also thinking about being future-proof. And Sim Shabalala, the Standard Bank Group's uh, chief executive, he recently announced that Standard Bank is actively migrating towards being a platform organization, a platform business. What does that mean, essentially, and how will this add value to the family office and family enterprise clients? I think that's quite an important question, um, Lerata. I think the easiest way to explain this is by way of a simple analogy that Sim always uses. We no longer want to just be the shop in the mall. We want to be the mall to our clients. And so this means that in some instances, depending on the client need, we may choose to use insourced capabilities, which would typically be leveraging off our core strengths in the financial services world, or outsource the solutions to external partners to ensure a one-stop shop for our clients. Standard Bank has 
incredibly strong relationships with our clients, but for us to credibly deliver an even, even better personalized and holistic service offering to our families, working with external partnerships has become an essential requirement in our business strategy. We can't do everything, and in fact, nor do we want to. So in an effort to truly provide the most appropriate financial and non-financial solutions to our families, we have been working in partnership with some of the best global firms in this specific area of expertise to leverage the required skills to make our platform economy a success across the African continent as well as abroad. This aligns also with our ambition of being truly digital and at the same time being truly human and connected. So Narato, you asked how this vision will add additional value to our clients. This opportunity gives us the platform to firstly meet a wider array of client needs, to deepen our customer relationships, as well as to fulfill our own purpose of driving Africa's growth and uplifting her people. With that, our, as our ecosystems grow and start to benefit from the network effect, business clients and individuals will be better understood, enabled through the more effective use of data, and our ecosystem participants will be able to quickly fulfill both our clients' primary and secondary needs in one place at a time convenient to them. The Phenomenal Family series and the pre-recordings for the session is a good example of that. Um, we're pre-recording all our sessions um, and we'll be delivering it either via a video or a podcast. And the client can listen to this at their own convenience. And so we're starting to see more of an alignment to actually what the client needs and how best we deliver yeah. to that. Fantastic. And also just integrating so much of these new technologies as well in that engagement. So what is currently on the minds of your clients based on your own experience of advising uh, family office and family enterprises and specifically with regards to trends that you've seen over these last 18 months? So we continue to connect regularly with our family office and family enterprise clients in an effort to gain understanding on how they continue to manage the impact of COVID-19. The pandemic has been and continues to be a true test of our family businesses, leadership, having to make, in some cases, life-changing decisions amidst such great uncertainty. I think, though, in general, the sentiment expressed is one of optimism about the economic recovery and the longer-term growth prospects, and they continue to place significant emphasis on leading their family or business with a heightened sense of shared purpose. Interestingly, though, this has become especially relevant for our next generation of clients who are focused on critical societal issues and I feel are genuinely passionate about making a difference in the communities in which they serve. There are, however, some that are still grappling and remain cautious on how the ESG programs will deliver a tangible financial return to their businesses and shareholders. But one of our content pieces in the, the latter part of our series actually covers this. So please do to stay tuned um, and listen to that, that piece. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've also had a, a massive acknowledgement from many business leaders that we all need to be the drivers of the positive change that we also desperately need and this country needs in matters such as gender equality, race and social issues. Now more than ever, people really seem to be caring about the organisation and what they stand for, perhaps also based on the realisation that these issues are increasingly becoming important too to their customers and suppliers. It is really now a core business imperative. Um, another priority amongst our business and family leaders is that they are now actively deploying capital to drive growth through digital enhancements and innovation. But they're also matching this investment into their workforce and ensuring that their people skills continue to remain fit for purpose. We're also going through the same process within the Standard Bank Group as we embark on our platform journey. And so during the pandemic, one of the other themes, which was really quite interesting that we started to see emerge, was a significant increase in the risk appetite of our high net worth investors and wealthy families 
looking for diversification in the form of directly held private equity investments and to share in off-market opportunities as well as to de-risk. I think what was motivating a lot of these clients seemed to be driven by the underlying entrepreneurial confidence and experience in running their own businesses. I think we do have a beautiful sense of the entrepreneurial spirit in Africa, and it's just something that I absolutely love and admire about our people. But of course, they were also looking at ways to enhance um, and to obtain higher yielding returns, more so than what they would typically achieve in investing in the traditional um, asset classes. This is especially relevant now in the South African context, where we are witnessing multi-year lows in respect of interest rates. But of course, um, this sounds way easier in uh, theory than in practice, because the challenges that our clients come across almost without exception is getting access to deal flow and appropriate networks that they can truly trust. And I think that this is where working with Standard Bank has proven to be hugely valuable to our clients. Um, we have been playing the role of a super coordinator of relationships. And because of that, we've been able to introduce our clients to high quality opportunities to which we are exposed to by virtue of our interconnectedness um, and the ecosystem that we enjoy within the group. This process is facilitated formally through our recently launched Inner Circle Investment Club. But I think that lastly, and probably most importantly, Many of our clients have had to transition from being a family business to now really, really focusing on the business of family. They remain deeply concerned about succession planning and continuity, the potential destruction of their family wealth and legacy, which we all know largely dissipates by the time it reaches the hands of the third generation, they're also concerned about the loss of family values and major conflict within the family dynamic. And of course, they are very, very focused on protecting their family reputation. And so it is with this in mind that our Phenomenal Family Series has been designed specifically to give our clients practical insights on how to navigate some of these very important and relevant challenges that we're all facing in this current landscape. Thanks for that, Lisa. Sounds like many interesting, courageous conversations that are going to be taking place and you've taken a holistic approach to it all. So thank you, Lisa. This sounds really exciting. I'm sure our audience will derive great value over the next five weeks.